Hi there, in this lecture we're going to look at the MDA framework. Um, because game design is a complex undertaking, several abstract models have been developed to streamline the process. They provide us with ways to understand the game design process by ignoring unimportant and distracting details. And the MDM, MDA framework is uh, one of them. If you recall <clears throat> in Greece, um, I gave you a, what's known as a dynamic, which is the middle of the MDA framework. It stands for mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics. The dynamic was a race to the end. And once you have that, it's a starting point. You can then develop the mechanics to create a race to the end. Um, so it's a good starting point and a way to make the game simpler to uh, design. So we had a look in lecture two at the elemental tetrad which is another model for designing games, which looks at the mechanics, the aesthetics, and the story and the technology, and helps you to look at which one of these elements might be weak in your game or which might be strong and how you can make sure that they're all um, equally strong in your game. The MDA, MDA framework looks at the mechanics, the dynamics, and the aesthetics. Um, People don't buy video games or board games for the rules. They buy them for the emotive response they get by using those rules in gameplay. For instance, people buy Grand Theft Auto for it's a, what's known as a sandbox game, and it's open world. What those means, a sandbox game, is you can pretty much do anything you want. There's no, there is a mission structure to it, but you can go completely off that. It's an open world. You can go anywhere you want and do anything uh, you want. And it's also uh, escapism. From the image there, there's a fella with a bazooka shooting a car. Um, you can escape into this other world. You can play as a, a criminal character. Um, then Dungeons and Dragons. Why do people play Dungeons and Dragons? You play it for it's a social experience where people work together in teams. Uh, they collect treasure and they level up their characters to be to build the characters to become better warriors or wizards or such like. So the MDA framework states that you as a designer create the rules or the mechanics of the game. The player starts at the other end of the spectrum. They see the aesthetics or they, in this case, aesthetic <clears throat> actually means the emotion that they're feeling <clears throat> when playing the game, um, the fun that they're getting out of the game. Uh, we'll go into that and dissect what is meant exactly by aesthetics. This is different than the elemental tetrad, where aesthetics means the audio and the visual and how they come in. Same word, but to complicate things, it has a different meaning uh, in the MDA framework. So we'll start with the mechanics. The mechanics, as we've stated many times, are the rules of the game. A mechanic is a simple element of a game, such as the character moving or the player rolling a dice. Mechanics in video games are often a lot less visible to the player than they are in board games. Um, they're behind the scenes. There's the code handling the mechanics. That's why it's better to look at board games to study mechanics, because they're the rules that you make and the rules that you play by. Um, so we look at, say, Super Mario as far as a, a video game. Uh, it's three mechanics to move the player around the level. One mechanic interprets the controller movement and reads them into the game. When you press a button, the programming behind it says, okay, they press the A button, what do I now do? Um, the second mechanic moves a Mario sprite around the screen. The sprite is the actual Mario character itself. The third mechanic makes the Mario character jump. And the dynamic created by these mechanics form the running and jumping throughout the entire game. And these are known as the core mechanics. The game is basically based on those mechanics. So we just have a look here. Uh, I'll just play this clip for you. So here's the first mechanic, jump. If you press it longer, the character jumps further. That's mechanic number one. There's mechanic number two, moving left and right. And that's basically it. anything else like that's the control you have over the character for the entire game. You're moving left and right and you're jumping. And it went to become one of the most popular games ever made just with those core mechanics. 
Now, because they're known as a core mechanic, they do them really well. Because they're known as players going to be using these all the time during the gameplay, they really concentrated on making those as well implemented as, as possible. In a board game such as Monopoly, uh, there's a mechanic of the player rolling the dice. Uh, there's a second mechanic of the player moving the avatar around the board, depending on the result of the dice roll. Uh, these are the core mechanics of that game. There are other mechanics that uh, look at what happens when the player lands on a square and has to pay rent and can buy it. But the core mechanics are roll the dice and move around the board. The dynamics of the play experience which appears when the player interacts with the mechanics. Um, luckily there are several core dynamics as well <clears throat> which we can use to give us a start on the game development process, the game design process. Um, as I said we looked at we used the race to the end dynamic as a really good starting point to create the mechanics for a certain type of game. Um, I'm going to go through a few of them, a few very popular ones. There are many of these, but these are a few of the most popular. The territorial acquisition. You acquire or take a piece of land. Uh, you typically create an empire or own the most of something. Uh, it emulates real world situations in which dominance is a factor. Uh, In-game success increases territory and failure shrinks territory. Board games which have used this to great success are the Carcassonne game that we looked at on the non-digital games. And Risk uses this um, on digital games, games such as the Civilization series um, and also something like StarCraft where you build up your, uh, you win territory by defeating the enemy and you get stronger um, by gaining more territory. Another popular core dynamic is prediction. This allows or encourages the player to guess what will happen. Uh, much of the time, the player's prediction involves luck or the consideration of odds. Examples of games that involve this core dynamic are roulette or the game of rock, paper, scissors. Spatial reasoning, the ability to manipulate objects, are uh, very common in puzzle games. Um, Tic-tac-toe is a good example of this, or... Um, Connect 4 in the digital world, a really popular version of this would be the Tetris game where you have to manipulate the objects and fit them into spaces. Also very popular in puzzle elements of video games such as the Tomb Raider series. Survival. We're naturally wired to survive and thrive and in video game worlds we instinctively protect ourselves. Uh, this Dynamic involves a constant life or death struggle. A um, great example of that would be the Minecraft survival mode where you have to build yourself um, a house to survive the night in the first instance, um, survive the monsters, and then continue to mine to craft things that were going to help you in the survival process. Building. We are naturally wired to build things. Um, so this is a dynamic that people naturally enjoy. It may involve building a city or a fort in a game such as the Civilization series, um, or again in the Minecraft series, or it may involve building a character, creating a character, and then improving on that character, such as games such as uh, Skyrim or Dungeons and Dragons use this a lot. Collection pattern matching. We are naturally pattern matches, we instinctively match similar objects together. Um, hugely popular games such as Candy Crush use this matching match three uh, dynamic and then games such as Sonic the Hedgehog where you have to collect all the rings in a level. The race to the end dynamic is the one that we looked at in Greece. Uh, it involves being the first to cross the finish line or it might be the first to build a particular building or research a certain technology. Uh, that's more in video games. Uh, this is a good dynamic to start with. <clears throat> it can be easy to create and to create a working prototype quite quickly. Uh, examples of this are the most basic example is the Snakes and Ladders game. Um, in the video game world, we've got Mario Kart, which is 
the race to the end with a lot of other dynamics added into that, such as a social element. Um, and then games such as the race to build a civilization in the Civ games. Next up is the aesthetics and the MDA framework, is how the player feels playing the game. Uh, this has been broken down as well, because the word fun, we want the player to have fun, isn't very descriptive. So I'm just going to go through a few of the, there's eight descriptions of the aesthetic. The first one is the player plays for sensation. The game is a sense pleasure, games that evoke emotion in the player. The sound, the visuals, the control, the rumble, or the physical effort are all included in this uh, aesthetic. Games include Dead Space, which gives the, the, the horror feeling, or Dance Revolution, which is a physical game, or even the graphics and sound of a game like Candy Crush. Um, fantasy takes the player to a fantastical world. Uh, games is make believe. Um, players play this. The emotion they want is they want to escape. Uh, games such as the Final Fantasy series or the Grand Theft Auto series, as we discussed before, or the Legend of Zelda, all players play for the escapism. Uh, narrative games as drama, a means to tell a story or narrative. A uh, good example of this will be the Walking Dead series by Telltale Games, which have a tell a story through interaction with the player, or another one will be uh, Dear Esther. Challenge. Games as an obstacle course provide the player with highly competitive values and the difficulty increases throughout them. Uh, Tetris will be one of these. It, kind of, it gradually gets harder and faster as the player goes through it, or uh, Dark Souls, which throws lots of obstacles at the player and challenges them to overcome them. Fellowship. Games as a social framework. Social interaction forms a big part of the game. Uh, on a non-digital game, Cards Against Humanity is all about the social interaction between the players. Uh, as we said before, the Mario game, the multiplayer, you're playing against other players. Or something like World of Warcraft, one of these games, which has many, many players who all interact within the game world. Uh, Discovery. Games as uncharted territory. Uh, the player explores the world, and that's what they get out of it, that's what they want out of these games, such as the Uncharted series or the Tomb Raider series. Expression. Games of self-discovery and allow for self-expression through gameplay, such as Minecraft. You build whatever you want to play. There is a very interesting game there called Roblox, which uh, I put a link to in the description, which um, the largest user-generated online gaming platform, 50 million games created. Um, the number one game site for kids and teens. Uh, users can create whatever they want and then there's a social element to it as well where other players can see what you created and interact with it. Uh, another example of this will be Second Life. Submission. Games as pastime. Filling downtime. These are games where you just want to switch off your brain and just tune out and play these. Farming and grinding are two terms used in the video game industry report repetitively repeating the same task over again to make to get for some sort of game uh, farmville will be a good example of this and also the candy crush games okay so how does this help with game design I'll give you an example here so let's start with an aesthetic from the list uh, submission i want to create a game that someone plays almost mindlessly to pass the time Choose a dynamic territory acquisition. Now we'll create the mechanics. The mechanics are easy to create now that we have an idea of the sort of game that we're going to try and create. Um, another example, start with a dynamic, a race to the end. Let's choose an aesthetic. Um, sensation, a game of physical exertion. So already when I'm creating the mechanics, I, I might choose a board that the player actually walks around or have challenges in there where they actually have to use, uh, do a physical activity. Um, I have a good point to start designing the mechanics. So that's the uh, MDA framework and how it helps in game design. 